So we're very, very excited uh, to have um, our speaker today and this topic on how to write an effective literature review. Um, writing a review of relevant literature is a key component um, for many kinds of research texts. So whether it's for your dissertation, whether it's for a research grant application, whether it's for a research article, it's complex. So how do you gather all this information and really integrate it in a cohesive statement? So with that, Dr. Sonia Martinez, who is currently a professor in the Mechanical and Aerospace Department of Engineering here at UC San Diego, will be delivering our talk today. Professor Martinez received her PhD degree in engineering mathematics from the, Univer from the Universidad Carlos de Madrid, Spain, in May 2002. Since then, Dr. Martinez has won many awards, including the National Science Foundation Career Award, Best Student Paper Award at the 2002 IEEE Conference, on Vision and Control, and the 2008 Control Systems Magazine Outstanding Paper Award. In a broad sense, Dr. Martinez's main research interests include network control systems, multi-agent systems, non-linear non control theory, and robotics. In particular, she has focused on the modeling and control of robotic sensor networks, the development of distributed coordination algorithms for groups of autonomous vehicles, and the geometrical control of mechanical systems. So without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Sonia Martinez. Okay. Can you hear me well? I have several. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, like this, maybe. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. I hope I can uh, convey uh, main ideas of how to write a literature review. And to, to do this, um, my, you know, the, the, the main thing I'm, I'm thinking about are research papers, okay? Because when you write uh, some literature review, you have to think of a context in order to write it effectively, okay? It's not something that you write and, and you know, sta it's a standing alone. Okay. So let's lower these bullets, okay? And there are many, but don't be scared because it's not too much. So uh, let's then start by saying what is a literature review. And then basically the literature review is a critical description of the literature relevant to a particular research, the particular research uh, work, okay? Um, so, you know, the literature is wide and there's many things you can cite, but you have to focus. Um, and then we can, you know, we can describe things that the literature review should be and should not uh, be. So for example, it should never be just a list of previous work. Okay, so that's a bad uh, thing to do. Uh, it should contain the works that you consulted in order to develop your, your research, okay? And uh, so, all right. again, not all of the works that you consulted, but the ones that are uh, directly motivating uh, your research, okay, in a direct way. Uh, maybe when you start uh, thinking about the program, uh, you read many papers, but then, you know, these, these papers are read because you are searching for something, some uh, problem definition, those papers shouldn't be cited in the literature review, okay? In the end, you just keep the most important ones. And then uh, the literature review should provide justification and background for the research that is being undertaken, okay? In your thesis or in, in your paper. So, uh, in other words, it should guide the reader to an understanding of what is the contribution of the work by pointing out uh, what are the shortcomings, what are the gaps in the state of the art, in the literature, okay? That's very, very important. You should never uh, leave a reader wondering, uh, you know, what, what is up, what, what happens with those uh, papers you, you are citing, I mean, why are you citing them? and how they relate to the research that you are uh, presenting, okay? Because if, if, you go, if you leave this up to the reader, your paper may be rejected, okay? So, uh, yeah. 
it has happened to me <laughs> many times. Uh, maybe something wasn't clear, and then the reviews come back saying, well, but this work is, it, is like this other work. How is it different? You know, you always have these issues coming back to you. So, and in your thesis uh, dissertation, before of your committee, the committee is going to have exactly those questions. What are the, how does this distinguish, uh, how this work is different from this and that other work? Okay, so in order for, uh, to prevent those type of questions and issues, you have to address them in your literature review. Okay, so types of sources that you can use to uh, write a literature review are the following. So, of course, there are journal articles, and I guess that these are the best type of sources. Uh, there are two types of articles if you want. So, surveys, which are very good. They overview, make an overview of some research area. Uh, they can look back, you know, five years or ten years, it depends, right? maybe five years is the, the best. And uh, they are good because uh, typically they provide already some criticism, criticisms uh, of the you know, papers that they are uh, looking at. Okay? So they, they can be really helpful to give you an idea of what is on the, in those papers without you having to read those papers. Uh, and then uh, research papers that are the, the papers that uh, you know, tell you state of the art research and uh, findings, okay? Uh, in particular, these are good sources because journal papers are peer reviewed and uh, you know, the review process is thorough, so there are guarantees that the results presented there make sense and are good, okay? So this is the best source of citation then books, uh, well, uh, for papers, I think that, you know, the, what you should cite is uh, some research, uh, recent research monograph type of book, or maybe, you know, some graduate text, okay, but recent. Uh, especially, this can be useful for you to look for other papers that you can cite. Uh, but then, for example, um, you know, uh, maybe they do not make so much sense in as part of the literature review of a paper introduction, uh, especially if these books are textbooks, it, it's a bad idea to include them. And uh, then, well, maybe later for other sections of your paper or, or your dissertation, you can use them, okay? Maybe you, are used, you would like to use some result that is in some book, uh, then, okay, uh, the, the time of citing this, this, this book is in a later section, not really in the introduction of, um, in your literature review, okay? Conference proceedings. Um, there are conference proceedings papers that are reviewed somewhat, okay? So, um, at least this gives you a more recent, uh, you know, uh, state-of-the-art uh, research. It also tells you what people are uh, working on at the moment, okay? Maybe, you know, a journal paper uh, has a, a review process that can, last, that can last two years or maybe more, okay? So it's not that recent, but a conference proceedings paper is more recent, but so uh, it gives you a more, uh, uh, yeah, so it gives you more uh, detailed uh, state of the art of the, of the research, okay? Now the thing is that uh, these types of papers, even though they are peer-reviewed, uh, they can be less reliable than a journal paper. Sometimes, you know, there are errors in these conference proceedings because they are submitted very fast. Uh, reviews are not that thorough, and then, uh, my recommendation is that you always cite the journal paper version if that is available, okay? Uh, many papers, many authors go ahead and cite very old conference proceedings, then that doesn't make any sense uh, at all because, uh, you know, probably there's going to be a journal version that is, you know, more extended and it's going to be more thorough, uh, you know, it's more reliable, okay? So if you cite those, 
well, I mean, limit yourself to, you know, the, just the most recent years, okay? Uh, other types of um, documents that you can cite include uh, government or corporate reports, okay? So, um, you know, depending on what you are studying, this could be uh, good sources uh, of, of uh, reference, okay, of information. And for example, if you are writing a research proposal, this can be very useful because they can outline, you know, uh, research funding uh, directions, okay? And then you can use them to motivate the research that you are proposing, okay? Like saying in the DCFOSR report, you know, for the next 10 years, they are inter interested in doing, in solving these problems, okay? So my research, the research that I'm proposing, perfectly aligns with these uh, issues, okay? So these are good in that sense. And then it depends on also on what you are, you are uh, the type of research that you are doing. It could be interesting also. So this uh, thesis and dissertations, all right. So again, it's a very good source of information. Um, you can view this as a research type of monograph, but then the bad thing about this uh, type of citation is that they are difficult to obtain, okay? So for a reader, may not be that useful that you refer to a thesis of, you know, someone, especially if this was a thesis, you know, an old thesis like uh, 10 years ago, okay? So who knows where you can find this thesis? So, um, okay, so, in any case, um, you can cite them, of course. Um, my recommendation as well is that you try to look for the journal publications associated with the thesis. It's, it's much better. And also, well, still maybe the journal papers do not contain that, those parts of the thesis that you would like to you know, uh, point out. So then in that case, you have to be uh, cautious, right, with, uh, with uh, with that, because you know, parts of that research may not be you know very thoroughly uh, re uh, thoroughly reviewed. Okay, so you have to consider those with caution. Sometimes uh, there there can be some mistakes there. Then uh, you have also specialized uh, magazines, and uh, for example, what I'm thinking about is uh, magazines that are published by uh, societies, right? So. Uh, this can include um, reviewed papers as well, and then of course are you know can be as good as a journal as a journal publication. Okay, so they they are they go under a review process and everything. So and and then if you consider other you know different type of magazine, well, it's uh, more than something that you can include in your literature review. It's something that you can use to find out other sources of information in the same way as, you know, you consider newspapers and the internet, okay, these are, yeah, you don't directly cite something that you find in the internet, right? So you try to, you know, find something that is more uh, rigorous than just anything there. Okay. So, uh, right, so we need to talk about uh, the context of a literature review, okay? This is uh, the most important part and what makes, what makes it uh, effective, right? So, as we said already, so it can be part of a research paper introduction or a thesis, or thesis chapter introduction or a section in a research proposal. So, typically in, in a research proposal, you separate uh, your literature review in a section, right, standing alone uh, section. And then uh, to write it effectively, you need to understand how it relates to uh, other parts of that introduction, okay? So let's review parts of an introduction of a paper or a, or a thesis chapter if you want, okay? So. The first part is uh, the motivation, is the opening of the introduction. So there's a paragraph that, you know, generally motivates the area uh, to which your research problem belongs to. Okay, so, and there's a, you know, motivation to study this set of problems. 
And uh, in the motivation already, the opening paragraph, you can include uh, already a few citations, not, you know, sporadic citations if possible. Um, so you, maybe you can cite a survey or a research monograph or some, you know, general reference that talks about this area, okay? And then it also includes some uh, research question or uh, thesis statement. So, okay, so you start. So these type of problems are uh, very important due to blah, 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 as, you know, uh, already uh, said in this and that reference. And because of that, now we are going to study uh, this research question. Okay. Then after that, uh, you start with what it is the uh, main body of the literature review, okay? So, uh, for example, if you are writing a, a paper, that's, that's the second part of the introduction and the second paragraph or set of paragraphs, and it should contain all of the citations, essentially, okay? A step for maybe a few citations in the motivation part and another few citations later, but if it can be avoided, it, it's better to put everything in, in here because this is the most important uh, part. <coughs> and then, well, you organize it by uh, topic, okay? Different approaches. So, um, so you have several paragraphs, depends on, on the space you have, of course, but several paragraphs, <coughs> excuse me. Each paragraph refers to, uh, to a topic, subtopic related with the, with the problem that you are uh, going to talk about, okay? Uh, you start with a sentence explaining, you know, this, uh, what is the topic or the approach about, okay? Maybe you can mention, you know, you can put it in contrast, in contrast with um, other previous approaches, right? So you, you have already some type of, of comparison there. And then you give a specific references that fall into this uh, approach or this topic, okay? And then what you have to do is you have to provide a brief analysis or, you know, also brief summary, uh, pointing to some a specific aspect of, uh, of that reference, the specific solution uh, in relation with the, with the approach. And also you need to mention some shortcoming of that work that precisely is the one that your, your work is going to address, okay? Or if it doesn't address it, okay, but at least the shortcoming of this work. Okay, because otherwise, you know, uh, you may give the impression that, oh, there, are, there is this work there, but, um, well, is it solving all of the problems that uh, we are interested in or not, right? So you, you have to say, well, no, there is a problem, okay? And then maybe there are several uh, research papers that, uh, you know, look at the same problem with a similar approach, so but maybe one extends another or is different in some ways, so then you have to make a comparison uh, between the, these references, okay? If possible, you have to do that. And then after this, this part where, you know, this is a set of several paragraphs and so on, uh, then you start with your uh, contributions, so uh, of, a of a paper or a thesis, right? So. Now you say, okay, in this paper, in this uh, thesis chapter, we do this, this, that, and uh, you precisely mention those gaps that you were pointing out in the previous uh, literature review, okay? So I'm just solving this problem, I'm just solving this issue, I'm filling these gaps, okay? Um, right, so in, yeah, so this is, you know, if this is a paper or a thesis chapter, if it's a proposal, for example, you don't have maybe contributions. It typically, there are no contributions because you, because you are proposing a research, okay? So then, the, instead of contributions, you may call this paragraph or this part implications for further uh, research, 
okay? So, uh, okay, you have the state of the art, you have these problems that the state of the art you know, has not solved, and now I'm gonna present uh, my ideas or my theories uh, that I can use to fill, uh, to fill these gaps, okay? Now, in, this, uh, in these sections, you should limit uh, the references that you use, okay? So, but maybe, you know, sometimes it's unavoidable. If you can avoid including references there, then it looks, uh, it makes the contributions uh, stronger, okay? Because it's like, you don't have to cite anything else, you are just presenting your, your work, okay? But sometimes, well, it could be, you know, it's something that you have to do because maybe you are, you know, for example, to, to say that, okay, to present some ideas for research that are plausible, that make sense, maybe you wanna say, uh, I'm gonna, you know, put this approach and that approach together, okay? And then uh, when explaining this approach, maybe you can add some citation, okay? It's, it's okay, or yeah. So it depends on the, on the situation, okay? So, all right. So let me show you uh, an introduction of, of one of my papers and maybe you can criticize it. <laughs> okay, so this is a paper and we are exactly following uh, that organization that I was mentioning in, in, the, in the slides, okay? So for example, here we have Okay, the first paragraph, this paragraph is a motivation paragraph, and we start, oh, recent advances, advances in communication, computation, blah, 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 are gonna lead to a new generation of autonomous systems that are gonna be great, okay? And then I have some works that are, you know, cited here, this is already maybe too much because there are like uh, five that are very, very general. Okay, very general uh, references. However, there are some drawbacks of these general works. And then I'm gonna cite uh, other, you know, works that have tried to address these uh, drawbacks, okay? All right, so then we start here. So this is like, you know, the opening to, to that. Okay, let me see if I can show you this better or, or what. Okay, so in this part, this first paragraph, right? This is a long introduction, by the way, but okay. So um, in, this, in this paragraph, I have, you know, a few papers that use certain approach, okay? So they, Okay, the paper is how to deal with uh, networks that have nodes that are failing, okay? So this, this first, you know, references, they, they uh, deal with these failing nodes in some ways, using some types of filters, okay? So uh, I, we explain this here, so they make use of these filters and observability, blah, blah, blah. However, uh, and then here, you know, this part is saying what are the drawbacks, okay? So, okay, these algorithms only work if uh, the number of good nodes is large enough, uh, a main drawback is the requirement of uh, some global knowledge of the network topology, and then you have to, to keep an estimate of the state of other nodes, which is not uh, scalable, so it doesn't scale well, and uh, in nine, which is another related paper, this assumption is relaxed. So I'm comparing another work that is, you know, uh, more recent with the previous work uh, are doing this. But then there is another problem because, you know, you have also an unscalable num number of filters and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's the first uh, paragraph for a first subtopic, if you want, okay? And then I have another one that is addressing a second. Okay, let me see if I can. Right, so this is a, a smaller paragraph here uh, that mentions a, a different approach, okay? So uh, robustness to outliers, okay, so these faulty nodes uh, are analyzed here and there. These approaches are based on this solution, okay, so it's a different solution from the previous one. 
and it has some advantages. So um, agents in the network do not know the network topology and are more scalable, but there is another problem, okay? These algorithms cannot handle properly multimodal distributions, blah, 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 okay? So I, you know, we, we say something about the papers, kind of a summary, we say, okay, maybe, you know, these are better than the previous solutions, but still are not good enough, okay? So uh, I'm doing that precisely, we are doing that precisely because later, our algorithm is going to be better, and it's going to precisely address these things, okay? So, yeah, I'm not going to show you, but, okay, so, so, uh, let me see. So, in this paper now, so, this is the, uh, this is now the contributions part of the, of the paper, right? So, we do this, first we have a different scenario, and then we talk about contributions, and we are precisely going to address uh, the scalability problem and the, uh, the multimodal distribution problem. Okay? All right. Okay. Okay, so um, then after this, okay, typically you have a, an organization section, an organization of the paper sub-paragraph there as well, but okay, so that doesn't have. All right, uh, and also, by the way, here, in, sometimes in, in your own paper, if you are writing a journal paper, you have to cite your conference paper and say how it's different from, from that, so you can do that later, later after all this stuff. Okay, so uh, maybe we can summarize, we can also look at how to write a literature review, uh, looking at some questions that it should answer, okay? So, all right, so these are some, like, 10 questions that you can ask. So, uh, so what do we already know in the immediate area concern? What are the characteristics or key concepts of, or main factors or variables? So what are the subtopics, if you want? What are the relationships between these concepts, factors, or variables? Uh, what are the you know, different complementary theories or approaches? And then, uh, where are the inconsistencies or the shortcomings in our knowledge? With these works have not been solved. I mean, those are the questions that, that you ask in order to come up with your research problem, okay? So, those precisely uh, when you define your research problem and you find a solution, you are having in mind some works. So those are the ones that you have to mention here. Uh, and then, okay, what views need to be tested, what evidence is lacking, contradictory to limited, why study further the research problem, what contribution can this study be expected to make, yeah, what research designs or methods are not satisfactory, okay? so. Some of these questions are, are similar. And then uh, this is, an, for example, a bad example of a literature review that I took from there, okay, so from the internet. So, for example, here you see uh, several things are going on. So, um, okay, so there's a first opening paragraph, right? And then this is like a list of references, okay? And uh, you see that actually the, the references are chronological and uh, they start citing the, the author. I mean, it, it goes actually by author, okay, not really by topic. So this author has done this. This other author has done that. And this author has done this, right? So it's really something that there's no, if you read it, there's no uh, comparison between the references and there's not really a criticism of, you know, any of, of the works here. So, uh, yeah, and also it does not relate writer's research, okay? So, so it's just an enumeration that doesn't help, okay? And if you, you look at the set of questions that we formulated uh, before, so it basically answers question one, but it doesn't really answer any of the other questions. 
And then uh, this is a better example of a literature review, and hopefully my paper was too. <laughs> but uh, basically, uh, it has a first paragraph, right? So it has several parts. So uh, the first paragraph is like a motivation slash introduction of the topic uh, paragraph. Okay, so it has a few general references. And also, uh, it relates to the topic, to the research topic. It does not enumerate authors, and it's not going in chronological order, okay? And then uh, it goes more deep or more uh, precise into the things that are relevant for the, for the research. This is the second uh, paragraph here, okay? And it makes, if you read it, uh, you know, uh, they make comparisons uh, and they say, uh, they say some, you know, that some short comments, okay? And then the final, the final paragraph is, is a paragraph that is going to relate to the research of the, of the writer, okay? So, uh, yeah, this is presented in contrast, in contrast with the previous paragraph, all right? So if you read the details, you will, you will see. So basically, uh, it groups similar information, shows relationships between different works. Uh, it follows more or less the outline that I presented for the introduction, okay? And it's organized about around ideas and not researchers, okay? So uh, that's, that's more, or more or less it, okay? So, so basically, to write an effective uh, literature review, you have to write with a purpose and a research problem in mind, which is your research problem. Uh, you must select a few references. You cannot cite everybody. And uh, you have to establish relationships between different works and your own. And being critical is, is good. So for example, once I have a I, I had a co-author that said, you know, I, I don't want to really criti criticize others' work because then I get reviews back and they <laughs> slash me. And uh, I don't, you know, I had bad experiences with that. But uh, I mean, you have to do that because you have to sell your work and, you know, say that your work is important, okay? So you have to make that, uh, you have to, to do a critical review. And then, well, you have to write and rewrite. I mean, uh, it doesn't uh, come right at the, the first time you write it. You have to write it and rewrite it. And possibly, um, when you are you know, defining your research problem, uh, you are going to consider some references. And later on, you are going to discard these references depending on how re your research goes. OK, so that's why you never write the introduction or the literature review of a paper uh, the first thing, okay? You leave it for the end. And that's it. So if you have many questions, you can may ask. Uh, here there are some references that I used to write up these, these slides. Okay? Questions? Anyone have questions? Yeah. Is there a limit to the number of references you want to use? Is there a low or upper just recommended amount? Well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it depends on the author. I mean, um, but uh, yeah, just a few references. I mean, just like, for example, you see some papers and you, you see they only cite like, I don't know, 10 references. I think that's too little, in my opinion. Okay, so a, a number of 20, I think, is, is good. 25, I think, is good. For a proposal, uh, it should be long, uh, larger, okay? Uh, but okay, going to the 100 references is not a good idea either, so, yeah. So something like 50, maybe? I don't know. So a lot of times in papers, they'll say something and then cite it with like five references. Like yeah. Reference. So that is not is many, that a good thing or a bad thing? It's not a good thing, as you may imagine, because uh, you have lots of citations there and you don't say anything, I mean, at all, specifically about every reference, right? I mean, it's hard. So 
I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, it's good to cite maybe a couple or three papers that are very you know, closely related, and that's it. Discuss those and, yeah. So having like, as is shown in this works, right? And then you have six references is, is not good. Also, yeah, so uh, people try to self-cite, yeah? So they don't work. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, anyway, so, so it's, it's better to have a balance and, and so on, right? So, any other question? Okay, so I hope that you found this, this useful.